My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves and may worthy participate in this holy sacrifice. Well, there may be a couple of boo-boos with today's Mass. I'm not firing all cylinders. We stayed up with the Red Sox last night. And uh, then after all that excitement at 12 o'clock, you know, then try to go to bed, forget it. Uh, so it's been a long night, or a short little night, and now I'm trying to function. And we also have our crop walk this afternoon. And so, <coughs> excuse me, that, that's Shane Victorino. <coughs> Shane Victorino. Right there, I started screaming so much during that uh, Shane Victorino. I don't even sit during these games. I stand in the living room watching the game. Uh, so it was kind of exciting, but uh, now we've got the World Series ahead of us. And today, this afternoon, we head off to our crop walk, and we have a, a bunch of different people walking in that, and uh, uh, hopefully collecting a lot of money for that worthy cause, 25% of which stays right here in Franklin County to help fight hunger, and 75% goes throughout the world, helping people who are in very desperate situations. Uh, so if you have not yet had a chance to make a donation to our crop walk teams, uh, please uh, see uh, myself, see Heather, uh, see Linda Pahalski, uh, anybody else out there walking? I forgot about the team. Oh, uh, Iris, the Gachinskis, Iris right there, that little Iris right there, she's a team. Uh, so if you'd like to make a donation to any of those people, uh, please see them, and uh, today's your last opportunity to do, uh, to do so. So again, like I said, there may be a couple of boo-boos, it doesn't feel awful if it gets up there right now, uh, but it was a lot of fun, and as we now gather in Jesus' house, with hopefully just as much excitement, I ask you to please make an examination of your conscience. Thank you. 
and grant us patience to await your reply. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead. And in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. Here ends the lesson prescribed by the church for this morning's Holy Mass. Amen. With all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the spirit. To that end, Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Will you manage to light the Almighty and call upon him constantly? Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And then Jesus told them a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. And he said, There was a judge in a certain town who did not fear God nor respected any other human being. And a widow in the town used to come up to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually thought, While it is true that I don't care about God and respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I should deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. And the Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge has said. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith still on the earth? By the words of this holy gospel, may our sins be forgiven. Dugout, 
He was talking about if he wanted to sell those tickets for uh, the, the World Series, then he could probably get $3,000. So he's on this waiting list to get those two seats right in the front row by the Red Sox dugout for 20 years. He had season tickets throughout that whole area, field box seat area, so that he could eventually you know, move here and a little bit closer and a little bit closer, so eventually he could get the front row seats. The guy who owned those tickets before, he said, held on to them for 50 years. But the guy didn't complain because he felt the payoff, those front row seats right by the dugout, that they were worth the wait. And last Friday, we went to uh, see a million dollar quartet over in the Boston Theater District. And after the show, we stopped at Legal Seafoods in the Prudential Center for a late dinner. Again, we sat at the bar. It's about 10 p.m., and across the way in Prudential C uh, Center Mall is a GameStop store. It's 10 o'clock at night. Most all of the stores are closed. But from our seats in the restaurant, we could see all of these people lined up right down the hall. I bet you there were 100 people, there may be more, all lined up, going into the store politely, one after the other. One comes out, one goes in. One comes out, one goes in. They hand over their money, and they get some kind of a little ticket that allows them to wait on the hallway floor for another two hours so that at midnight they can actually go in and have the privilege of buying some video game. A mother and her young son come into the restaurant and they sit down beside us. And I found out from her that this new video game was Pokemon. I thought Pokemon you know, died 10 years ago, but there were these hundred people waiting in line so they could be the first ones that night to stay up all night and play Pokemon. So there were parents with children in that line. There were teenagers in that line. There were 20 and 30-somethings lining up and waiting until midnight in a hallway of a hall just to play a brand new video game. They waited, they didn't complain because they felt the wait was worth the effort. And then there's Jesus, who has to sadly wonder out loud for us in today's reading. But when the Son of Man comes, when I, Jesus, come, will there still be faith on the earth? Will we wait? Do we think it's worth the wait? And I'm not going to take that story down the conventional path of a priest complaining that people have so much time for so many other things, but church, sadly, not so much. Instead, I want to try and look at this from the perspective of Jesus. I want to try and feel what Jesus was feeling when he said, I come. Will there still be faith here looking? Will people care? Will they remember? And since I'm in no position to say what's on Jesus' mind, I'd like to share with you a story from the Bible from the Old Testament book of the prophet Hosea. Hosea, he loved his wife, but his wife did not love him as much, and she proved unfaithful. Now, according to the ancient law, Hosea could have had her punished, he could have had her killed, but the prophet loved his wife. So Hosea took his wife back after she had proven unfaithful, and again, the wife proves unfaithful. In his state of emotional anguish, the prophet heard God's calling. As surprising as it may sound, the emotional wreckage that filled Hosea's heart and soul was what finally cracked open the door so that he could hear God's own self-revelation of emotional anguish. Nobody was prepared in Hosea's day to understand that God who had a broken heart. Their God was powerful. Their God was strong. Their God was Sabo, the God of the armies. And only Hosea when he had gone through the torment, the anguish of a broken heart because his wife had been unfaithful to him on, a num on numerous occasions, only then was he able to hear that God also had an aching heart. And I don't think we're all that accustomed to thinking about God in terms of a broken heart and lover like he's revealed. You know, all powerful. You know, that, that's something that sounds like God. But in comparison with a jilted lover, I think that then and today, it still makes us feel uncomfortable. We don't want to think about God as having a broken heart because people aren't faithful to him. Maybe this revelation was and is so strange 
that only a broken person like Hosea could hear God's own plea over all of our preaching about God. We sometimes preach as church that God is up there unchanging, that you know he's up there in all of that wonder and that bliss and that all of the things that we do down here, that you know he knows about them, but they don't really change it. But Hosea says God had a broken heart. When we ignore God, it's not like God says, well, well, we'll see what happens with the next generation. It hurts God. So what shall I do with you? But he says, O Ephraim, he says to the prophet, what shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like dew that goes away early. And just like the prophet, God cannot seek punishment. Rather, he yearns for reconciliation. And he continues, but how can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? My heart recoils within me, says God. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not, I cannot execute my fierce anger. This is a God who understands what it is to be hurt. And this is a God who loves us so much that it hurts when we don't try to love him back. That's what I'm trying to get across with that whole idea about Jesus. Will anybody be faithful when I come back? I think Hosea's revelation of God can help us better understand why Jesus says what he says to us today. I think we're seeing Jesus tormented by fears that his message, that his ministry may be forgotten, that he himself may be forgotten. Think about how many people in your world just have no idea what Jesus is anymore. Think how far away Jesus is and think how much he is willing to do because he loves us. And then don't think about it as sin and obligation and damnation. Think about it as breaking Jesus' heart. Does that matter to us? I don't want to complicate the story, but Jesus' question is located between his second and his final passion predictions. He knows that his time is short. He's preparing to give everything that he possibly can to and for us on the horrible cross. His commitment to us never wavers, not even in the face of his own torture and death, but Jesus still asks out loud, will I find faith on earth? He is the broken-hearted God revealed in Hosea's own emotional anguish. His question emerges from the deepest recesses of his soul, and he is really wondering, and all that I'm doing, all of the stuff that I'm doing, is it all worth it? Will it last? Will people care? Will they remember me? And this is why I can't just stand here and complain from the pulpit about people finding time for so many other things, but not for Jesus. The real question is, why? Why can I get so excited about a simple Red Sox game? Why can I get so excited about the anticipation of the World Series with something as simple as the Red Sox that, you know, it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. But why can my, my heart pound? Why can I stand up in my living room and watch and tell me that I can't sit? Why can I yell when Shane Victorino scores a grand slam? Why do I get so excited about that? And then church for so many people is just, oh, it's church time again. With that said, Let's listen to what was read to us from 2 Timothy by Chris. Remain faithful to what you have learned and believed. Remain faithful to what you have learned and believed. Where's the who in that statement? Where did Jesus go in that statement? Why are we, why in that already maybe 15, 20 years after you know, Jesus has passed away, maybe 30 years, why are they already looking backwards to where Jesus was instead of where Jesus is in their lives. Already by the later writings of the New Testament, it's turning into a faith about Jesus and not a faith in Jesus. It's turning into someone else's story rather than our own. And if today this is still the best that we can do as church, then really, shame on us. And no wonder people aren't as excited by church as they are by baseball and video games. In Hosea's day, the temple continued her liturgy. But God said to the prophet, the more they incense, you know those incenses that we do on the high holy days, the more they incense, the more they sinned against them. The more they boxed their faith between walls of a building, whether grand or small, the less they cared about me in their daily lives. God became the practice of professionals and stopped being a personal God. His people forgot about him and let somebody up on the top of the hill offer the sacrifice. And just like that, it broke God's heart. Jesus has to wonder out loud, will I find faith on the earth? And that's up to us and whether we can make this time together 
our special chance to connect with Christ, not because of obligation, not because of fears of damage, and that just doesn't cut it with a God who loves us this much, not because of what others have told us, but because we have built a real relationship with him, and we feel him here, and we need to be with him here. Let us pray that we can have faith in Christ like he has faith in us, that Jesus is worth the wait. And this we ask in his name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty and most merciful Lord, as we gather on this beautiful fall morning, we also offer our prayers for all who will be participating in this afternoon's crop walk. We ask that their collections have been generous. We ask also that all the work that we try to do through that worthy organization may help your people so desperately in need. We also offer our prayers at this time in memory of Andrew Suchak on the 45th anniversary of his death is offered by Daisy Benjamin and Dan. We continue to offer our prayers for Daniela, who is suffering from spinal cancer, is offered by the Zara and Lynch family. We also continue to offer our prayers for Marshall Ehrenstam um, as he continues to battle his uh, cancer. We offer our prayers for my friend, Dr. Jay Sullivan, who is now in a nursing home uh, battling cancer. My friend Susan Zarachak, also battling cancer, who we'll continue to offer our prayers for uh, Bishop John, who is just beginning his battle against cancer. We also offer our prayers for the strength and health of Hugh Hubbard, as offered by the Hubbard family. We ask the Lord to bless each and every one of us here gathered. We ask that you hear the private prayers that we bring before your altar. We ask the Lord to be with all of those who are perish who are unable to be with us here today, and those who are perish who have chosen not to be with us here today. For all these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of the and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God of true, true God, begotten that day of one who came to the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, who was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and punished aside. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and fulfilled his scripture. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the Lord to judge the living and dead, and the seed that will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the God and His Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism with the traditions of sins. I love the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you.
receive from your most sacred hands, your most gracious Father, the sacramental bread, the same faith and trust of the apostles and disciples of your Son and our Savior. When he said to them, I am the living bread that came down from heaven.
congregation in you faith in your holy care, your rule and fatherly love. Wholeheartedly this day, we unite in spirit with all of them. We give the most blessed Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, likewise his apostles with all the innumerable hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life in his most precious blood. Just as they believe, profess, and united with you through prayer in this immaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the work, and in time have fulfilled for Jesus Christ, and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation. So we too this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit, and accept from your hands this holy bread and this precious chalice as a law of poor gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. He promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread and feeding with a hungry multitude of people. And afterward, he told the uh, giving of it to his disciples and friends as more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And afterwards, with the temple of messianic life, of the divine teacher and heir of the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those who he loved in a singular way, and had chosen to continue his word of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. In the world you will face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, it will be done for you. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. For their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. After these other words of the archpriest of prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty God, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, all of you take and eat of this, for this is my body. In like manner after supper, taking also this excellent chalice which was holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed them and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and drink of this. For this is the chalice of my blood, of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith, which for you and for many shall be shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you shall do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mind you, we, your servants, as also your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, is also his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension. We receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of eternal salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance as from him, who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly beseech you, Almighty God, command that our prayers be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar before the countenance of your divine majesty. That as many of us as receive this altar the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Be mindful also, Lord, of your servants and handmaidens, all who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to you. To be 
these souls, O Lord, as also to those who died in Christ, to grant everlasting life, and to those who are in life strayed from the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shore their sufferings, we beseech you, in the name of Christ our Lord, and your beloved Son. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles, martyrs, and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name's sake, whose hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and whose lives pattern after the divine master, merited the eternal bliss. Remember us, O Lord, their company, with confidence we ask you, not because of our merits, but that you bestow forgiveness through Christ our Lord, by whom, O Lord, these gifts you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and bestow upon us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, to you, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and all glory. Throughout all ages of ages, Dietary precepts and following divine institution, we may hold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Worship, adoration, and a holy longing. 
may make me a willing and zealous servant toward fulfilling God's purpose on earth, and may it at last unite me entirely with you, O Christ and God, in eternity. Grant this who lives reigns of God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces that he has rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy. And enter my eyes, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy. And enter my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy. And enter my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God,